Hello and uh, good afternoon viewers. Once again, another riveting edition of the show, Business Steps or Practical Business Steps, brought to you by Enterprise Uganda in partnership with Minister of Finance. I am Charles Wood, your host, as usual. And in the studio today, I have our business coach, again, as usual, Charles Ochichi. You're most welcome to the show. Thank you so much and good evening, viewers. Very good. Now, all the way from Buyende, our entrepreneur, Yasini Magino, as you've already seen in the bumper. Yasin, you're most welcome to the show. Thank you. Very good. Um, Charles, it's been a good week, indeed. And uh, yeah. talking about the money, it seems Uganda's economy is not short of money. Very true. But probably how we use the money. Very true. And of course, when you tell this to a number of Ugandans, they might look at you <laughs> with this other eye and they're like, we are living in another money. world. Exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> looking at the numbers from the National Social Security Fund and yeah. what they are telling us, yeah. uh, because um, every month, mm. almost 50 billion is released in the market, Correct. paying people that are retiring, pensioners. And these are few people, considering the fact Correct. that the bulk of Ugandans are young people. Very true. So you only have a few that are really, really in the evenings. Very true. And therefore, even a fewer number of people who have been mm. serving with NSSF yes. and are therefore qualifying to receive NSSF money. Very true. Exactly. Tell us, I mean, what is causing this mismatch? Because you don't see many investments started mm. by Retire these pensioners. People who are getting this money. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. And I want to tell the viewers that uh, this week I was privileged to be on a webinar where NSSF invited me to talk about how you can use the resources within your hands. And in that submission, there was a presentation from NSSF summarizing the statistics about what they do and how they release money to the public. The two that caught my eyes, eyes, uh, ears and eyes were the following, that um, every month, every 30 days, they release between 46 and 51 billion to people who have hit 55 years. Mm. At 55 years, you're at your prime, you're still strong, you're still bright, you're still sharp. You've gotten the money. You've been given the, 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 the billions. Mm, and it comes lump sum. It comes lump sum. Yeah. You've been waiting for it, it has come. Now that's one statistic. Mm. The second one says, when these people take this money, then you go and do a survey and evaluate what has happened to them. After 24 months, 72% have gone bankrupt. They got the money, they are still at their prime, their brains are still sharp, they have lost the money. Mm. That's painful. And it tells us that it's not that they didn't get the money. Mm. It's not that they were not having still sharp brains. They just didn't know what it means to expand resources in your hands. It is one thing to be given no amount of resources, but without the knowledge and the skill to expand it, it will go away in your hands. That is very powerful and very important because it's not just about the money. It's not about the money. Yeah. And just look at it again like this. Now, that is the five part of the 5% that this fellow earned money for f up to 55 years mm. has been given. He had gotten the other bit of the money all along mm. on his own. He mm. was having it. Yeah. So mm. you can see how endowed this country is. But at the same time, how wasteful and painfully, painfully inefficient we are in investing the resources that come our way. And uh, just to pick a little bit further, there was another static which said that um, of the people who are getting this money, 78% get less than 10 million on retirement. Mm. But they have been waiting for it with a lot of patience and they wanted to hit just at 10 million in their takeoff, in their li last part of life, mm. only to get it and waste it away in two years. Very interesting. And I think, Charles, that's why we're here. That's why this show is here, mm. to actually help you um, make wise decisions. I mean, you may not be a pensioner or someone who has qualified for NSSF uh, money, mm. but before that time, you need to prepare yourself for that. Mm. And I think the problem is that as people wait for this money to come in, mm. lump sum, yeah. there's no preparation. That's, that's the point. It, exactly. So it comes and then plans begin. Exactly. Somebody has been saying, I'm waiting for my money. When my money comes, everything has been crowded into that small basket. Yes, yes. And the person who's waiting for the small basket has been practicing wasteful ways. Yeah. 
and finally it gets delivered mm. and then they tell him please that is all you have in your life mm. run jumps in and just rubbishes the whole thing thank you Charles I think we'll and dedicate uh, sorry mm. we'll dedicate a session to really look at uh, addressing the pensioners because I know among our viewers, yeah. we have those that are aging towards the evenings of their lives. Yes. Those that are already there. Yes. And uh, I mean, as a must, because yeah. we, we, as we grow, we don't <laughs> look backwards. Every we day you lose, <laughs> every day you have gone through, it's gone. Exactly. So we need to prepare mm. ourselves for the inevitable, as Correct. they say. Very good. Um, uh, viewers, today we have a very important guest, like I said at the beginning, is all the way from Buyende. And is a story of a young man, an entrepreneur who with interest in different uh, sectors of the economy, talk about real estate, is in fishing, oh, uh, fish it's actually fishmongering. Yeah, yeah. Fish Although mongering. fishmongering is... Yeah. is, is, is <laughs> well yes, it. yes. But I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> yes, yes. It if, it, if it brings the Benjamins, as exactly. they say, yeah, <laughs> that's what matters. Yeah. But anyway, he's going to tell us his full story. Mm. And the topic for today, we're looking at business tips or business steps how a fresh graduate used university upkeep allowance to create an export business, build rentals, that is, sit in real estate, and other businesses, as is going to unpack them. But if you, before we go into that discussion, Charles, mm -hmm. um, again, it's the time to distill yeah. the message of our entrepreneur last week. Very, very powerful story, mm. and I'm sure those who missed will actually pick yeah. quite very interesting points to support their yeah. aspirations in business. Yeah, thank you, Charles, again. And I want to say that whoever is watching this program, mm. never ever imagine that this is a session for young people, a session for people who are educated, a session for people who couldn't make it and they are villagers. Mm. This is a session for all of us, yeah. all of us. And I normally mm. start by saying, in the previous episode, we hosted a young lady here. Yeah. A young, a young lady who branched off early in her education mm -hmm. into a vocational training and yeah. got that skill, and from there on she went into business. Yeah. But my headline learnings come like this. Number one is that it is possible to get passion for whatever you are doing, mm -hmm. provided you can discover the difference it makes in people's lives. You've always had the, the advice which says that, please do what you are passionate about. Then somebody says, am I passionate about moving oranges from Nakawa to Kitintali? Is that passionate? But you can begin to build the passion about that game by saying, mm. there is somebody waiting for juice the other side. There is a patient who needs to be given juice now, now. And that patient is waiting for me to deliver the, 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 the fruits from Nakawa, yeah. from Kalerwe over to Kitintali on mm. time. Over time, you begin to say, oh, this is the thing I love because there are solutions I'm giving to the society. Yeah. The day I'm not there, my people will come and check where is the passion fruit seller. Mm. So it's okay to be told that do whatever you, what, what you are passionate about, but that can delay you for nothing. Mm. Start solving people's problems. And as you do that, start saying, how did they enjoy the fish that I supplied? Yeah. My fish is better than the one another person delivers passion begins to get in there. Headline learning number two was that um, there is always enough space for other players in business. So you do not have to either get jealousy yeah. over the competition mm -hmm. or fear the competition when it arrives. Welcome it, learn from it. If you are concerned about somebody who has come in and then you are saying now how do I try and uh, disrupt this person, you lose one, the learning, mm -hmm. two, you lose the vision to serve the customer better. Mm. So please just recognize that it's like Japan. Everybody is trying to, there are so many companies making pickups. Mm. And each one is making an amazing quality pickup. If they were just saying, oh no, you have also come to make a pickup, they would have all thought that the only market was in Japan. Now they saw that, okay, we have created a competition within Japan. We built our strength. And that strength that will take us to conquer the rest of the world. So please do not fear or misunderstand the value of competition. Mm. I think the word is misunderstanding. That is the key thing. Mm. We have remained rudimentary producers of solutions in Africa 
Because the moment that somebody begins to do something around us, mm. the first thing an African wants to do is to bring that one down. down yeah. So we all remain down. All yeah. of us are down. Yeah. Then it's okay. Yeah. Look at the story of Japan. Mm. They began the competition within Japan, and when they were all be so powerful, they said, the market out there is ours. Let's go. Let's just go and become Japan mm. occupiers mm. of the rest of the world with all electronics, technology. So competition is beautiful when you see it from that angle. Okay. Number three headline learning for me is formalization of a business. In the end, it's a good thing. Yeah. But it should never delay your getting started in business. Mm. Almost every story of a successful entrepreneur never started by saying, when do I register my business? Where do I rent from? Which employee do I hire now? And what is the name I'm going to give it? And then uh, what's the uniform of the workers? And then what time should they be reporting? Mm. All these things, you sharpen them, mm. shape them along the way, as you later see from the story of Jackie, a lady who started the business at home. Yeah. And today is a major supplier of top-notch solutions of fabric to high-grade consumers. Mm. So I just wanted to bring those three and tell the, the listeners that, please, every Sunday as we come to this afternoon, there is a good opportunity for you to learn something. Ignore the faces of the young people that may come here. The faces of people who may be saying, this is a pharmacist. Please, don't mind about the word pharmacy. Learn something that that pharmacist is doing. Mm -hmm. That somebody might be an engineer. Don't mind. Don't about the mind, uh, mind about the word engineering. Mm. How are they going about doing business? And There's I always say that the, the business language is universal. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mm. So very quickly, these were the specific lessons that came out of Jackie. That lady yeah. who was supposed to have gone very far in her academic career because she was brilliant, mm -hmm. but ended up going into a tailoring sc uh, school. But today, having over 60 machines, most of them electric, mm. for making garments, and she has also started uh, a, a vocational, vocational institute. institute. Yeah. So the first thing that I think I got very clearly from her is that uh, God never gives us a video about our future. <laughs> there was, if God had told this Jackie that, Jackie, please go to that vocational school, do you see your video five years from now? Mm. Do you see your video ten years from now? Please enjoy the vocation. Mm. She would have jumped and said, it's okay, God, I'm going to go to the vocational college. But God simply says, I'm not going to give you even a dream, even a, a, a hint. Mm. Walk into that thing and shape it up. Yeah. So, if he did so, many of us would have persevered through the challenges of life being inspired by the great ending that you saw in the video. Mm -hmm. But Jackie, a bright student, had to branch off early into a vocational institute. Graduated at the top of her class, but still regretted missing her dream of becoming a medical doctor. But here's the good ending, if the video was there. Today, she is a proud and a motivated owner of a garment factory supplying top-notch customers. You saw how she was talking about how she can get a man with a high-quality suit mm. that ne needs some kiraka, some repair. Mm. Mm. And you will watch the threads and say, where do I get the best kiraka to match this kind of a thing yeah. so that this man can continue enjoying this? A suit bought at $1,000. Yeah. You shouldn't throw it away within one year because mm. just a small part mm. got worn out. That comes with passion and desire to make your customers happy. But this is the lady was saying, why did I become a tailor? Why, why, why? Her, her students, top scorers, mm. A plus, and she's now enjoying seeing them growing in the public uh, arena. Number two, most people attribute their failure to start a business or to ex expand a micro business to lack of capital. Mm -hmm. You know I cannot increase my enterprise here mm -hmm. because I lack capital. That's a song. It's a very And because of that song, yeah. Jackie's had about a, a loan program by government and said, I'm going to go to Enterprise Uganda because the precondition is that if I don't have that certificate of Enterprise Uganda, I can't qualify the other I will side. not get that money. Mm -hmm. She comes for the training. 
when she came for the training, this is what happened. It was a youth venture capital at that time. She discovered that actually her current micro business could expand and progress very far, but she had lacked business skills, mm -hmm. how to run an enterprise. And she quickly illustrated. She said, I lacked customer care. I didn't bother whether you came back mm -hmm. or you complained. So long as you have paid me my money, you go. That one mm -hmm. does not create a growing enterprise. She lacked business records, marketing skills. And later she also discovered, having been taught about the loans, she said, this is not the time to take a loan. But at some point I will take it. She had come deliberately saying, uh, yeah, as soon as I get that certificate, I'm going to run and get my money. And they were calling it our money, the youth money, our money. Mm, mm. She discovered she was ignorant. And many of us are like that. Not that you are necessarily trying to target government money. Many of us are saying, I'm not doing well because I have not gotten a bank loan. And you are rushing to look for a bank loan. Yeah. Only to discover that there were issues you should have fixed. Before you went, before for, the you bank went loan. for that bank money. Three is that a success in business makes customers give you good suggestions for growth. The people were happy with Jackie, told Jackie, Jackie, why don't you now train my other sister, my other daughter, my other relative in tailoring? You are so good. She said, no, I'm just concentrating. Then another one comes, then another one comes. What did she do next? She rented the next room, mm -hmm. put the machines there, and started a very small vocational institute without registration, but was having customers. Mm. But was the customers who pushed her there. Similarly, as she continued doing a good job, her own customers, the big clients were making orders from her, said, you know what, Jackie, we want you to bring for us 3,000 pieces of an item. Mm. But please do whatever it takes for you to go and get money. Whether, wherever you are, wh whether it's the bank or wherever, just go and get that money. So as you serve your customers, you get more ideas and guidance from the very people that you are serving to diversify into things you never would have managed to go and do. Fourthly, concentrate on building trust. And this came out more because as Jackie did a good job, she had built good client uh, respect mm. and repeat businesses. And when that happened, she then decided to formalize her business. As she formalized her business, she also started now to fulfill things that are required for you to bid for big time business opportunities. Mm. She now had to get all the registration certificates. She had to get all the things, including certification of some of her products. But as she did that, she started to win these contracts on merit. And as she won them on merit, using the, the letters of comfort from these big companies, she was able to break that big hurdle we always talk about, mm. failure to get a loan from mm. a bank. Mm. A letter from an international agency that to was a client mm. of, of Jackie yeah. was sufficient for the bank to say it's okay now. If these people are trusting who you, who are we not to trust you? I think that was a very powerful message. Exactly. Mm. The bankers are saying these fellows are of international repute. Mm. They have trusted you. They have given you this deal. And they are going to pay through our bank account. Please, Jackie, come. And when that happened and Jackie paid on time, the biggest challenge on Jack today is not how to get more money. But to tell bankers that please no, no not not no, not now, mm. not now. Many want to give her more loans and more loans. Implying building trust is a gateway to almost anything. We call it in our training, we call it international currency. Mm. The moment you are you are trusted, you've just acquired international convertible currency. Finally, remain visionary. Ten years from now, Jackie says she will have built a family house to say I deserve to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. She will have also built a home for the vocational institute where she will be saying, I am going to create and build the finest tailors Uganda needs and maybe the rest of Africa. Those were the stories and the lessons from the young lady Jackie. Thank you, Charles. And I'm sure our viewers have picked very critical lessons there. Um, again, the approach is to make it as practical as possible. That's why we bring real people in business. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, from them, you can actually know. Because, you know, Charles, there are many times when someone will tell you, you know, 
we read these textbooks. Those are textbook yes. solutions. Yeah. If you bring an interna uh, international expert, they will tell you is from within, without our exactly setup. Yes. So therefore, he doesn't know the realities. Yes. We're contending with doing business in this uh, in this environment. Exactly. It's the reason why we have this approach. We bring you real business people to actually a share local Ugandan. The yes. A person you can know where he grew up from, uh -huh. like this man here. Yeah. People from Busoga know him. Yes. Yes. I and they will even be calling him. And they that know his home. <laughs> <laughs> at, that, at that point, I'll come to him <laughs> to introduce himself properly mm. and tell us what you do or what kind of business or lines of businesses are you involved in. Thank you. Thank you. By names, I'm called uh, Majino Yasin Wilba, popularly known as Plan B. That's my business name. And uh, later, I formalized it as my company. Plan B. Plan B. <laughs> I would like to hear more about yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> mm. So, uh, like, um, that, uh, that umbrella of Plan B, uh, I've created some series of business. Okay. But uh, majorly, it has been fish. Mm -hmm. Fish has been, uh, I've concentrated a lot in marketing. Okay. Because that's where I entered in. Of uh, course, fish is a broad business. Mm -hmm. There's marketing, farming, Fishing, what the nets, what? But for me, I put myself at the, at the other end where, yeah. uh, of marketing. You connect the guys to the market. Yeah, the market, the fish farmers, the really fish, mo the fishermen. Mm. So I've been more in fishing, in, uh, in fish as a sec the fish sec the fishing sector, mm. but majorly in marketing. I hear you. Yeah. So are you doing this in Buyende or it is you've that's expanded where it to other That's where it all started. Mm -hmm. Of Maybe course. You can uh, give us the background where you, who you are and then how you are in Of Buyende course, uh, I'm a man from Buyende mm -hmm. uh, along the, the shores of Lake Chog. That's okay. Iingo landing site. That's where the really okay. home is. That's your best. And that's where everything started. I hear you. Even in business. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, the first born. Among seven to my mom, and uh, first born to my dad, we are three. Uh, my mom, is, unfortunately, is a single mom, so I'm behind her with, the, with the seven. I hear you. Yeah. The life, I choose to be in Buyende and start in Buyende because that's where I saw my potentials. I get I, you. I, like I, saw, I remember my mentor in business. Via the training, they told me to never to excuse myself for not finding where to invest or the business opportunity. Mm. It is to start where you are. Mm. So I started where I was, and that was we ended. Mm. That's mm. what we ended. At the base, proper. At, at the base. Mm. <laughs> so I started at the base in we ended. Okay. Everything started there. And uh, of course, as we, we you accomplish this, you move on mm. as a plan B. At the beginning, this mm. um because. You need to unpack this for me, and I'm sure there are university students listening to you. Indeed. There are some fresh graduates listening indeed, to you. Indeed, indeed. Because our topic today, we're looking at that, how someone can use that mm. little money, the li the upkeep moment. money yeah. from university to actually yeah. start a business. Mm. Yeah, okay. It all started like this. Uh, while I, I was uh, in senior six, yeah. eleven, my, uh, in my eleven, mm. I struggled for school fees. So someone came in, was a strong businessman, and I call him my dad. Mm. He's called Mr. Friday, Namada mm. in Busia. So he, he called me on board to help him in business, but the payment was fees. Okay. I support you with the fees, but still I see some abilities in you. You can help me, support me in business. In business. So I, po I supported him in his business, and, and he, he was supported paying me. Fees. So That's after my senior six, fortunately I did very well. Very well. Uh, they, they said I went on government. Okay. So that one I think rendered Mzei to be kind of... I needed him, but now not for fees, mm. because the government has already taken me for to Makere. Mm. So when I reached Makere, the issue now wasn't uh, what I was doing to raise fees. The fees were already captured for, for government by the government. Mm. So income became what? A problem. Mm. So... It's just like s doing something, uh, we, we, you normally call it at campus, uh, like a side business, yeah. uh, a side business to a side something, uh, <laughs> kind mm. of. Mm. So I started all like that, but though at the end, 
I didn't see it coming that it would be a bigger thing. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, capital, as pe people say, capital is a problem to start. Mm. To me, I also saw, saw it because fish is a little bit uh, capital intensive. Yes. But I wanted to start uh, to the via was seeing it. Mm. So I wanted to start with a little and I was looking at uh, maybe 5M mm. as my starting capital. Mm -hmm. And which, is no, which was not the case. And I, if you remember very well, well, William Labour was the chancel of Makere. There was that chaos in 2012. It's you of embezzled, it's living out allowance, what? And we were the, we were the victims. We were the government, we were demanding our areas for the first semester, that's 2012, then uh, the next semester, that is uh, mm. uh, 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 for the last semester of our second year. Mm. So Your I allowances didn't come. I, mm. ca I come to Mr. Chichi in the training after hearing there is money in the bank. Okay. You can look for it, then invest in the bank. So, particularly, I was looking for the 5M. So that I started. That was the youth venture capital. The youth money. venture capital. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, the government yeah, program. Uh, the, yes, the, yeah, they said I now. You can get the five million. Yes. You can get the five million, mm. then invest it. You, in a, you either get it as a group in the bank or oh. you, you, you borrow using the circuit. Mm. Mm. The group it wasn't there. Mm. The circuit was wasn't there. It was you. It was me that mm. was there. Mm. So I went to Enterprise Uganda. I attended the training. Out of the training, I went to look for the 5M. After the training, I was no longer looking for the 5M. Mm. The idea I got, that you can never use a loan to start a business. Mm. A loan should really facilitate a business, should, should make the, the business move, mm. not to start a business. Mm -hmm. That's the idea I got from Enterprise Uganda. Mm. And I went back home, I internalized everything, and what I came up with, no, I must look for small, uh, something small to start with. Coincidentally, now university, so to save everything, they pass our areas. That's mm. So it amounted to 1.5, around 1.4, 1.5 there. <laughs> which was, to me, was very big. It was a blessing. A very good blessing. Because by then, purchasing the smallest unit of fish stock to Kenya, it was at least 100 kilograms. So there are people, like my former boss, Mr. Friday was now controlling almost the whole of Lake Chog. He has the trucks there, he has every, every facility there. So I requested him if I could get capital, I buy it a little. He takes, me to the, he takes it to the market, I get something, of which he did for me. I got the, the I call it Variam Labor money, mm. because, uh, <laughs> 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 yes. because it was uh, via Variam Labor. <laughs> then when they paid off Variam Labor money, I invested the money, and not even all. Remember, I was looking for the 5M. I've got 1.4, but I still I was seeing it as much. Because your mind had been free to actually look at yeah. other aspects, not other just the aspects, money. Other aspects, of course. Mm. Now, the guy has given me a way forward of at least buying 100 kilograms worth 600,000. And I, at hand, I have 1.4. Mm. Meaning it was already excess when it mm. comes to capital. I so that's mm. why the, the living out allowance starts the, the, the journey. So the you business. start. Yeah. Um, paint for us a picture. Um, you know, you start with that amount of fish. Yes. Mm. Uh, how and does it still grow? A student. Yes, you're still a student. Yeah, I was, mm. still a, I was a second year by then. You were still a second year. Yeah. Mm. How were you able to juggle this, you know, business? Because, I mean, I see a number of students who will tell you, I'm mm. still a student. Yes. Yeah. And I can't so I can do A, B, C, D, and Y. Mm. Indeed. Mm. And for maybe I call it a chance. For me, I didn't have that excuse. I saw it as a an opportunity because at least my course had gaps. I, I had uh, two lectures a day. And these lectures are, were spaced, very well spaced. Mm. If you do one in the morning, the other one will be in the evening. Mm. That was one. Then I didn't have uh, on, on, on weekend lectures. Over the weekend, I was totally free. So I could move from Kampala every Friday evening to Wiende. So That's that I'd be pa part of the business right from the where it comes from. The uh, entire then on device. Sunday, mm. I go to Malaba to monitor. Then from Malaba, I come back for the lectures on wow. Monday. Wow. So it was a quite a, a long cycle. 
but uh, I got adopted to it, and at the end, it worked for me. Hold it there. Charles, yeah. what are we picking from here? Yeah. Very interesting uh, picture in there, and then uh, you also begin to see how sometimes we do not stretch our young people yeah. in a better way. The young man had already something going on with him, and he knew that the benefic benefactor who was paying school fees, who was having some opportunity for him. If you had told him that, please, there's youth money, but come and do welding, immediately he would never think about the opportunity, which was a low-hanging opportunity with Uncle Friday. You called him? Yeah. Uh, Friday Namada. Friday ma ma Namada. Yes. That opportunity does exist. And you can see, if you are introducing somebody into business, if they can pick something more of a low-hanging fruit, they can run away with quickly, yeah. support them. Yeah. So that, to me, was a key, key learning. If the father had gone and said, no, 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 you, my son, I don't want to see you doing anything else, you must go to the stationery. Have a chat with him. Mm. Have a conversation with him. So he went into this fish because in his senior six, Uncle Friday had already introduced him to the game of handling fish business. And he had yeah. seen the dynamics. He had yeah, seen of it. Course. Mm. Mm. So giving him a chance to talk would make you know that there's a, a low-hanging fruit somewhere, which even if you are the adult who thinks you know a bit more than they do, you'd actually see his sense if you had allowed him to talk. Mm. That mm. was the first learning. But number two, you also discover that uh, there is this element of our people having its self-discipline in consuming resources. We've always seen that young people do not handle resources well. Yeah. He accesses his money. Yeah. He sees the first thing for this man is not the good shoes. I have suffered a lot. My mom is a single mom. I'm now here coming to this campus, and this man has come in. And I'm sure his colleagues bought either good mattresses or Need. good watches <laughs> or good belts or something like that. He did. said, no, my money now must go into a process where it will begin to expand. To expand. Mm. Mm. So he already had that control and self-discipline of saying, I can control my money. But it p he picks some of the things that are central in our training. Yeah. We normally tell people that uh, start where you yeah. are mm. with what you have. Mm. He believed it. And he knew. This is a Kampala boy now. Mm. Yeah. But gets this good money. <laughs> only to run with it to Buyende. Yes. <laughs> yes. But he was running there because he was familiar with what he was going to do. What others are saying, I can't mm. go back to the village. I cannot I can go back to the village. I'll do anything again. possible yeah. to stay in town. <laughs> Indeed. No, I think that's a powerful <laughs> one. Because mm. um, mm. I like the fact that he had this idea that mm. the capital he needs is five million. Yes. At the yes. beginning. Yes. 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 But after the reconfiguration. <laughs> yes. Mm. He's like, no, with 1.5, I'm good to go. Exactly. I'm good to go. Indeed. Mm. And Indeed. he even said it was even much. Yeah. And then said, these excuses of thing have no time. You, you had how it fitted that yes. element yes. Yes. of managing time. Yes. And yes. you know that even as adults, when yes. you are working in the office, you say, I'm a busy person. Mm. Yeah. Monday to Friday, I'm very busy. I mm. work up to late in the evening and I'm very tired. Mm. And you know what? The moment you tell the brain that, indeed by 5 o'clock, you you sound you feel very tired. I mean, look at that schedule. You have yes. Kyoga, yeah. Lake Kyoga, yes, Busia, Busia, Makere, and, Makere. and, and the books, and yes. the books, and the business. And yes. the business. <laughs> I mean, it is, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I think it is quite powerful because you know, yeah. as a young person, there's a lot you can do. Indeed, very your true. body is still energetic. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh. You can do so much, and I think many of our young people are actually wasting a lot of time. And yeah. we can actually let him tell us, did yeah. you finish your course? Because Somebody might be saying, let's hear whether he finished the course. <laughs> With yes. that kind of a schedule, did he finish his course? Exactly. Of course. Yeah. Mm. Uh, no, like this is on record. So yeah. if whatever he says here, absolutely. It is Makere is just uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. Just in here. Mm. No, like in my course, I think my course was one of the most crowded courses by then. Okay. Yeah, because uh, we had we were over 600. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, they even divided into two groups. Day section, two groups. Which course is wow. this? Uh, it was development studies. Mm. Then boarding in an e evening, still e into two groups. Not only that day and evening. No. Yeah. Meaning we're almost four classes in a single course. But uh, this was record, at least I was 
among the best performing in the in in in, in, in class. Wow, that's yeah, great. In class. That's great. What yeah. was the class of the degree you got? I, I got a a, a, a second and then a, a, a second upper. I was I was there is some friend of mine called Lawrence that got a first class. Uh -huh. And this is a guy that he could do really get see me as a resourceful person. He could come to me, let's do this, let's do this. And I remember for me I had no time. Mm. He could only get me mm. when, when, uh, when I'm off in my businesses. And yeah. that person yeah. that used to help is the one then who got a first class. Yeah, that, that and you friend. ended up with the upper for a second class upper. Second, second yeah. class upper. Uh, yeah. That's a super yeah. performance. That's a yeah. good one. That's yeah. a good one indeed. Mm. So you've uh, begun operation yes. at Kyoga. Yes. Um, you're buying fish. Yeah. Um, paint for us. Um, walk us through the journey. Um, how big is your... Okay, how do you grow that fish operation mm. for starters? No, mm. like... Well where it is today. Well yeah. and good, to the point where I started, mm. the most uh, fortunate part of it was the profit margin. Okay. It was a bit big. Because uh, for per, per 100 kilograms, I could at least get 200,000. And this could be twice a week. Okay. Meaning every week I, I could manage to save 400. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I moved like say 10 weeks, I would still rock the 5 million that mm. I, I was looking for. Wow. Mm. And now on its own. Now the, the essence of looking for the 5 million wasn't to work, and, and, uh, to work under someone. was at least to hire a truck by a certain quantity that that is uh, minimally can move what a, a truck, truck. To, to the border on your own to see now. on my own mm. Mm. so i started with this 600 so that i get the the 5m mm. that can Through minimally saving. make me move mm. the uh, that minimum quantity to, to, to for export mm. to to to, to busia or malaba so after a period of four five months that money was with me you had it yeah okay so now i leave muzei that I was helping me transport to the market. Now I hire a truck. On your own? Uh, on, on my own. Mm. I decided, okay, this is my money. Let me try. Let me, uh, it was risking. Mm. Like I, I hire a truck, everything on me, and every risk on me, whether it, it is movement or what, the drivers, the truck, because the guy that hired me the truck said in case of anything, I need my truck. Yes. Hold it there. Mm. What principles? Mm helped you to move from uh, you know, the armpits of Mosei mm. to now expanding your capital to mm. a point where mm. oh. you can now be on your own, ha mm. have your own truck. Yes. Mm. Because most businesses, mm. yeah. that's where it really gets Yeah, you feel crowded. comfortable yes. to yes. be under the, the wings yes. of someone. You know, like for Mosei, mm. it had limits. Mm. Remember I told you, though I had the 1.5 that could uh, help me buy more than 100 but uh, it was an offer mm. at least you buy this it no cost no what okay. you see it so was helping in case you initially in case Muzei is taking say two turns and for you also looking for another two turns in that case you'll own the business together yeah. and that one Muzei couldn't accept it of course mm. and i wasn't a partner mm. he was just helping me yeah. Mm. So here, if I expanded the business within his, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. Mm. And to me, I have the money that is enough to do something towards Muzei. How did you save that money? I mean, I'm thinking the discipline, how you manage to actually, yeah. you know, because I mean... 200 per trip. Yes, mm. you have contending needs here and there. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you, you had people you, you, you were supporting, yes. even back home, yes. given the picture you've painted for us, yes. the family yes. where you come from. Yes. How are you managing to make this money grow, mm. even at that, at that stage? As I told you, the turnover was at least twice a week, mm. and the profit margin was uh, that much. Mm. If you're earning, say, 400 per week, per week it means a month, it is 1.6. However mm. much you're extravagant, mm. you can't tell me you'll spend the 1.6 at invest. <laughs> I hear yeah. So at least you'd save a million. Mm. Mm. What part of, of, of uh, like uh, if it is 1.6, at least I mm. saved a million mm. Mm. and uh, 600 a month, uh, it, at least beyond doubt, it can facilitate someone at campus. That's mm. a good one, yeah. Mm. I think, um, yeah. dear viewers, you can be part of the mm. discussion. I mean, if you look on the screen, those are some of uh, Yasin's establishments. You've seen the real estate projects, he's into, mm. he's into fish farming, he's into cattle rearing, he's uh. 
I mean, Plan B is really Plan <laughs> B. He's spread his wings <laughs> in various sectors. Indeed. And uh, I think, you know, there are very critical lessons uh, to pick from his story. Mm. And um, we, are, we want to hear from you because we want to have this as, you know, engaging as possible and we want to involve you as much as possible. For any questions or comments, there's a number on the screen. Just send a WhatsApp for that comment. Uh, it will be answered. Any question that you want uh, you're seen here to answer, and uh, Charles mm. would like to pick your mind on that. So, um, Yasin, uh, how big is your operation today? I mean, in the fish subsector. In the fish. Before we go into the other sectors, because it seems yeah. this is the mother yeah, yes, the investment. Mother. Yes. Uh, at the moment, uh, at least it's at, another, uh, at a uh, bigger level. Mm. Because uh, fish, as I told you, is a big, big sector. People look at it as something small. But fish, you can never exhaust it. You have to only to concentrate on a certain kind of uh, uh, aspect in it. Yeah. You can never be the farmer, then you market it, then you export it. It's always hard. Yeah. So as I told you, I, I put more efforts on marketing. And I, I looked at the major markets. Here in Uganda, we have, if you, we have Busega, Boise, Busia, and Malaba. Mm -hmm. Those are the major markets. So my aim. And my dream was at least to deliver fish to each of those markets. Mm. And I can tell you, at least at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm living my dream. You were able to deliver to uh, Malaba, Boise? Each Bois. of those markets. What are the frequencies and sizes like? Uh, like, for, uh, each of for Malaba, it is daily. What do you de de deliver? How much do you deliver daily? Daily, at least I can deliver two times daily. That's worth the around uh, 18 to 20 daily. To Malaba. Million. Millions. Then Busia, at least I can deliver a ton daily. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, for Busia, it caters the far east, far western Kenya. Say Kisumu. Then for Malaba, still it is Malaba mm. uh, up to Bungoma, mm. the, the far western Kenya. Yes. Then I look at uh, Nani, at uh, Busega. Mm -hmm. Busega, there is a lot of demand as well for fish. For fish here in Kampala. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, at the beginning, we thought I thought the only market is Malaba and Busia. Mm -hmm. Then I had people making money in Busega. So uh, I, I applied the, the, the training kind of uh, knowledge of accomplishing and moving on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You accomplish and move. So I, I went to Malaba, I rented the house, I got my truck, Almost a year there. At least I was building all the, 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 the necessary nani, the necessary tools to, mm. to, to facilitate that market. And all that. Mm. When I'm not there, mm. the f right from the staff oh, to so the you customers, you put a, a system. Uh, a system. You sat in there to put you a system. So I was there area. for almost a uh, full year. Wow. And uh, after seeing that Malaba can move on while I'm not there. I you tick you tick that box and move. Yeah, yeah I, I accomplished. I left. I said, okay. <laughs> Charles, <laughs> manager, so what do we pick from here? <laughs> yes. Just saying, hold yes. it there. <laughs> in the mm. Here is the message. Um, there are things that he has just brought out which are very fundamental for any business person. Mm. Number one, internal growth, what they call in some high language, organic growth. Mm. Ability to save the profit you made mm. and put it to raise your capital. Earn more profit, raise your capital. That is fundamental for anybody who wants to succeed in business. But then number two, he also recognizes that um, a business cannot just be announced today that I'm in Malaba and yeah. it begins to roll. Mm. You've got to get into Malaba and understudy and put the systems that make Malaba work. Mm. Once you do that, then only then should you start to move to the next destination. Yes. Otherwise, if you put a shallow route in Malaba, mm. a shallow route in Busega, a shallow route in Bwaise, you're gone. Yeah. So that is something he needs to continue doing. Because in our training, when we say accomplish and move, yeah. accomplish and move, yeah. that accomplishing is not just acquiring capacity to do something. Yeah. That capacity is not just only in terms of equipment or technology systems, human resources, yeah. and all it takes to make that particular stage to work must be accomplished. 
then you can move. I love the system mm. aspect. Yes. yes, the system. So you finish uh, Malaba. Malaba. Yes. Busia. Busia. So what do you, uh, where do you move? Because I'm really enjoying this. Yes. Um, like I said, this seems to be the foundation of all the other investments. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Of course, for, as I told you, I was targeting the really, uh, you remember Mr. Charles, that business understands nothing. Doesn't know your friend, mm. doesn't know your relative, doesn't know your father or what. Mm. Correct. But five things, the supplier, the customer, customer the government, was. bank, staff. and staff. Mm. Yeah. Those so are the five elements. So while mm. I was in Malaba, still I was looking at that. Is my business, the government, is it, uh, like, uh, is it following the government rules and regulations, mm. the ministry? Yes. The yeah. Minister of Agriculture, I don't have the licenses. Mm. Yes. So after seeing that, okay, banking, how will I be receiving my money? The sales, how will be the, the banking, so on. Mm. I put all that, the customers, I, as I leave my boys, I don't guarantee them sales. I have to, s to leave them with the person who will buy the fish. Mm. And for them not to cheat me, it is me selling indirectly, though they are the ones delivering. They do the manual. And they do the manual, but, but it's behind the scenes. The behind the scenes, I'm there. You're in charge of the system. Yeah, every morning I have to tell them so and so wants this. Mm. Send to this way, send this, <laughs> this, this <laughs> amount of fish. This. So at the mm. end, I'm part of everything, mm. though I'm not on the ground. Mm. You can't do business uh, by remote. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I'm part of every stage of my business. Mm. Though if you find my, f my phone early morning, it is taking orders. I want this, I want this, I'm this way. New customers, old customers are coming in. I hear you. Yes. So you roll from that side now, you come to Kampala? No, like uh, from Malab, I went to Busia, mm. still there for another year. Okay. After seeing that, I stationed some number of boys there. They do it very well. I hate you. Now after that, uh, I come to Kampala. Mm. That's uh, Kampala, that is Busega. Mm -hmm. Now and the, the, the other part of this business is brands. The only thing that really has uh, enabled me to succeed and grow is branding. Tell me about the branding. Because yeah. most of the people in fishmongering, I mean, fish is fish. Yes. Uh, yes. Charles, I mean, when we go to yes. the market, yes. yeah. I haven't seen any who brand. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that's to you. But to me, that is in, uh, that is in there. I get you. I know. Tell me about fish it. Fish, mm. it, it has a lot of brands, I can say. Brands, I can say, it, it, it starts from sizing. Of course, the fish that Mr. Chichi will buy, the size that he wants, it's not the size someone in Waisa will, will buy. Yeah. Yeah. Ochichi can afford a single head of fish at 40,000. Yes. Mm. Someone in Katanga wants one of 1,000. But yes. he also wants the fish. It, but he also wants fish. Mm. Yes. So <laughs> you have to sit and see which kind of customers, which kind of customer yes. am I targeting. And their needs. Yeah, so for me, I... I realized I, I branded myself at uh, with a certain size of fish. Okay. With a certain size, especially and at with the a particular market segment in yes. mind. Yes. Yes. Now, when you come to Malaba, mm. they need small fish. Mm. Busega, they need big fish. Mm. And when you supp the supplier is supplying you, they can't say you t this is small. This they will give you at once a mix. A mix. Oh, yeah, yeah. So mm. if you, you build a market of big versus small, it means the supplier will be contented that this one takes my, my, my stock mm. fully. Thank mm. you, Yasin. Yes. You hold it there. Yes. As Charles mm. comes in here, mm. as you mm. think about, because we want mm. you to walk us through how you now came up with the idea of diversifying mm. Indeed. and why and those particular businesses. And yes. it's now in Kenya as well. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Charles, the key learning yeah. so far. Yeah, I, I think this is very, very fundamental. Uh, we keep on telling people that there is one customer, I mean one, one, one authority who can dismiss anybody from business. Yeah. And that one authority is called the customer. Mm. If he wants a small size of a fish, please understand him mm. and deliver the fish. Mm. The other one needs a certain size of a fish. Please understand him and deliver that fish. Yeah. And please do not try to coerce them or convince them that even this one is okay. The thing has got too many small bones. The man has enough money to buy <laughs> a fish a with good a big bone size. Are it with with less yes. Yes. work? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so please, I think if the if 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 we are seen can keep up with that game, mm. 
he can only be stopped by himself. Market the market is available. Yeah. Yes. Very, that very ability important. to know very that important. this is boy say. Yeah. You don't just deliver all the fish and just say, uh -uh. you people just see what to do. Mm. Yes. The boy is a man who is buying the things wholesale from you, knows his market. Mm. He says, please give me this. If you bring the big one also, I'm going to give you a low price. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because my people cannot buy it at the price you are talking at. Thank you, Charles. Mm. Mm. We'll yeah. pick it from there. On that note, viewers, we're going to take a very short commercial break. And we'll pick, I, I've seen a number of messages coming through uh, on WhatsApp. Uh, Yasin and Charles are good. Welcome back, viewers. It is still Business Tips with Enterprise Uganda. And um, our guest today is Yasin Mageno, all the way from Buyende. He's uh, a fishmonger, but today is actually beyond a fishmonger. Mm. Uh, I would like to call him uh, a trader uh, mm. in fish, or a businessman for that matter, because yes. his interests have now spread beyond uh, yeah. the fish industry. Yeah. So, um, Yasini, um, I understand you have operations yes. beyond the confines of Uganda. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, the operations beyond the Uganda... We have been in particular, like, particularly we have been in Kenya side. Okay. Because here in East Africa, Kenya has the biggest demand for fish. For them, it fish is a very, very big component when it comes to their nani, their diet. So much. It's so much. And I call it so much, sana. Okay. So, so I've been more of Kenya. Yeah. Where I tr we tried other countries, but they're not really, they're not commercial. Okay. But so... Kenya is very, very commercial. You can find a single trader buying a full truck mm. at, at once. Mm. Gives mm. you the money you go. Mm. And that's <coughs> what I'm doing. I hear. So as the brand, as I told you, branding, I branded myself along the border. That's mm. Malaba and Bosia. Mm. And these people across, of course, if they want fish, they're always here. Who is there? Who's in the market? I agree. Now, yeah. um, moving on, uh, because I know behind that Fairly wide operation. Yes. Busia, Malaba, Busega, Buaise. Yes. They are people that you employ. Yes. How do you manage y your human resource? How do you deal with that and ensure that these guys actually deliver mm -hmm. your vision? Yes. Mm. Like uh, my, my, my staff, that's uh, the around 51, I can say. If you look at the whole system, mm. the around 51. But as I told you, at every point of my business, however much I'm there, I, I put a system of at least it's like a pin. Mm. They reach a certain point when it is me to do it. Mm. Just like you do have a system yeah. that however much you do this, at a certain mm. point you have to come back to me. Mm. What oh. How should we do this? Okay. Just like in Kenya, I tell you, in the morning, it is me who knows which quantity to be delivered to Kenya, which one is going to Tororo, which mm. one is ending in Malaba, and mm. who is taking it. So you built a system where I you didn't cut yourself out. Uh, 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 mm. You're part of the system. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. So here, contact, uh, f calling becomes a, a very big component. Okay. You may find that uh, in the morning, unfortunately, these people make all those operations at once, in the morning. Mm. Busega in the morning. Why say in the morning? You go to Malaba in the morning, Busia in the morning. Mm. So if you don't, you, I, I, I control them almost on remote. Okay. Do this, go this way, deliver this. Right from the driver to the, pa to the manager. And the manager, it is the, there is a manager who is just uh, in administration. There is the one in writing, recording. There is the one dealing with the finance. So... If someone told me we sold a ton of fish, so those are 10 million. Mm. The, the person handling the finances will tell me I banked the 10 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. You double check that. Yeah, so the driver will tell me and we delivered. We delivered. A ton. Yes, and mm. the receipt, the invoices are there. That's a good one. So mm. if you went, to say, to Masaka, you bought a ton of fish and you take it to Malaba, did, you, did it reach? Was it still a ton? That's a good one. Yes. So beyond fish, yes. where else have you invested? Yeah, we are. We have. My, as I told you, my major aim has been uh, diversifying. Okay. At not not only looking at fish, mm -hmm. but I looked at fish as a a big opportunity to finance other businesses. 
there is a, a first, at first when we go back to the end, I first look at the border borders. Mm -hmm. These border borders, I looked at to Im uh, in two ways, in fact, three ways. First is to impact the community. In the village, someone can, my mom was sick, but even getting to the clinic, there was no way to take care to the clinic. Mm -hmm. No means. So at the end, I impacted the community. If you <coughs> buy certain border borders or 16 border borders, they can help the community. They pay you, but at the, at the end, they feel you're helping mm. them. You're at delivering convenience in the moment. For, for convenience and ease. Mm. Then the other thing, those border, very border borders help me to transport my fish from the des very deep destinations where there is fish, mm. but the, the truck the can't truck reach can't there. there. Mm. So the border goes and pick it. That was it. smart. Mm. And at the end, I'm helping these youth mm. because 16 border borders, those are 16 people. And mm. each border border has a friend mm. that will always give a chibalua to, to mm. their friend. Mm. You understand that dynamic so, very well. So they feel you. <laughs> you, they okay. you. You feel uh, the community, you really, they feel your impact. Yeah. Yes. Mm. They, so mm. then mm. Uh, uh, beyond border borders, I put up mobile money outlets. They're around eight. Eight. Yeah. In fact, my elder sister is uh, be, uh, behind everything. Mm. She's managing She's managing that space. Yes. That's and an if there are eight outlets, those are eight more employee uh, jobs I've created for mm. them. Mm. Mm. Uh, I can get someone in the village, he says, help me, like this kid wants a job, this one. I'm giving her a job, but doing business for me in, ac in actual sense. Mm. Mm. So it really, those things, the border borders and the mobile money, have really benefited just like in the community. It has how really impacted in the community. You bring out a very important aspect, again, before you talk about the other businesses. Y how yes. do you manage a relative, Yes. Mm. you know, in business? How do you keep her in line to actually deliver, like other, the other ones of yours? Well, there will be many it's uncles, uh, neighbors saying, please, even my daughter is here. Yes. Mm. Please, you, know, you, like you assisted the other one the other day. Mm. How about mm. now? You even ate our mangoes <laughs> here <laughs> while still growing up. Still, it goes back into uh, to system. Mm. I look into my, uh, like look, uh, uh, if you uh, look at a person, be it my sister or what, but you have the credentials to do my business, as oh per yeah. my system. Mm. It's capacity. Yeah, I create a system, like in mobile monies, these people have a center to pick the money. Okay. Then uh, after picking the money, in the evening, they have to deposit that money again mm. on my DTB account. So at the end, I can sign like five check leaves. I live with a sister to withdraw the money and give it back to them. Mm. Even meaning that one creates like, though I'm not there, the manager, while they are uh, withdrawing the money, wh wh when they take, they take the check, you will have to call me. Yeah. That really have you sent these people for money. And this, at that point, I'm, I'm, I'm being part of my business. Mm. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. I love that. Yes. So where else have you gone? beyond mobile money and uh, border border? I'm in two farming. Okay. Yeah, I think now it is over 150 heads of cattle, oh. over 300 uh, sheep, mm. over 250 goats. It's a mixed farm. You know, like goats, sheep, uh, cows, birds, they are all there. And so. Those are a lot of businesses too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's don't you wake up sometime in the night saying chicken or sheep or something? Yeah, in indeed. The of the night? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sometimes. How uh, do you manage? Mm. It, it is always mm, good to utilize, to fully utilize s space and opportunities. Yeah. Like I had space somewhere. Uh, there were some rangos, and I, I looked at what to do with that space. And if, say, every week, there's a uh, livestock market in our, uh, in our village there in the end. If every week I bought, say, two, mm -hmm. and I put in that farm, yeah. in the rotation of one year, there'll be much. Mm. So I started like that, and now it's a big farm. I'm looking at expanding it. Interesting. Very big. Very interesting. And you know, if you have wa over 100 heads of cows, uh, like, meaning you every one year, you get more 100. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I'm going to ask my producer to run some of the pictures of uh, yeah. Yasin's investment. Yes. But uh, as he does that, mm. and as we Charles comes in and we go to the comments and questions of our viewers, mm. um, I know you were into real estate. What kind of real estate are you doing as well? 
I'm looking at uh, rentals. But before rentals, I told you of my background at home in the family. Yeah. This is a mom that was sleeping in a grass thatched house. I'm here at university, but I'm even afraid of picking a friend. So if you, you're my friend, mm. I take you to the village in Wuyen. Mm. I make you sleep in a grass thatched house. Some of, uh, of some of them, they have never even s seen them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So mm. I first looked at changing the image and status of my home or yeah. and my family, yeah. right from the paternal and maternal side. Mm. So that's when I started some big, big constructions right from the village, not uh, in the in town. So I did a construction for my mom, mm. my construction, then some other constructions right in the village. Mm. As I was doing that in the in, in, in around Kampala, I was concentrating on buying purchasing plots, mm. prime plots. And now that I'm done with the village, I'll concentrate on developing my plots around Kampala. Viewers, I have to mention that Yasin is 28 yeah. years. Yeah. He's a man in his 20s, and you can see his vision is quite broad. And uh, like Charles said at the beginning, and I agree, and indeed want to add that the business language is a universal language. He's mm. young, but there's a lot we can learn from him. Mm. Uh, mm. Charles. Mm. 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 Yeah, this is, there are so many things we pick from the story of Yasin. And I think a few can be shared right now. One of them is that um, before Yasin discovered this principle of accomplish and move, accomplish and move, mm. he would have been like many of us. You do one good thing, you move from 10 cows to 150, the entire village is celebrating you. Mm. You settle there. Mm. But he's still leaving the message which says accomplish and move, accomplish and move. That is one key thing that I think we all know, need to know that uh, if you do not have that desire and the need to improve what you have all the time, it is easy to quickly compare yourself to where you have come from yeah. and yes. settle. Yeah. Yes. This man has left his background by so many miles. Yes. But he's still saying, no, the God that created me wanted me to make some transformation in this country and I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going. You know, you've seen the trucks he's owning. Yeah. How many trucks do you have? There are three trucks. Three lorries. Yeah. Yeah. By the time you own one lorry in this country, we talk about you way beyond your village, yes. more way beyond your district. <laughs> <laughs> you even yeah. start working with a swag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Charles, um, no, I think let's move to the questions. I yes. have many questions here, tons of them. Yes. Some going to Yasini. One of them yes. is, did you have a girlfriend at campus? But <laughs> as you think about that, <laughs> <laughs> someone is, uh, I think it's Brighton from Barara, is mm. saying, at what stage? did you think about registering your company? Yes. I don't know which one you want to start with. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I think I will start with the last one. Okay. I registered my <laughs> company way back. You know, I, when I thought of a mobile money business, mm. by then it was the easiest mo business to start. Mm. So I thought of starting it, but, but by then, MTN conditioned you to register a company so that they give you the lines. Mm. That's when I opened, I, I, I registered the company. Okay. And that's how I got the Plan B name. I so you. it is a Plan B Gaps, Uganda Limited. I so it is a registered company. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I love the name though. It's a yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I have Ben mm. Gaboy is saying, how did you manage the costs and savings at the, at the same time, especially at the beginning? That balance. The costs and savings. The costs you are incurring. Yes. Mm and then being <coughs> able to save <coughs> still. Because mm. many a time, someone is doing a business, but the costs are eating into... Uh, but mm. uh, of course... You and I think as you come into that question, yes. you are the firstborn. In an African setting, it's common for elder children uh -huh. to begin to take hold yes. of the, the younger ones and take them to school. Actually, we call we them deputy parents. Yes, yes. I've done that. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> if we are seven, the six, mommy doesn't know where they started from. Mm. I pay over five millions every time wow. for them. Wow. And uh, I've, I, I've always told them, I want them to live like sons and daughters of a minister. Mm. I've taken them to big schools. Mm. And I just want to impact my family, first, mm. as I told you. Yeah. So the other thing, like he said, managing costs. Mm. Yeah. You can never realize a saving, a profit, minus deducting the costs. I can I can serve saved the hundred when it is less than what 
the cost. So I've already managed the costs. Mm -hmm. I can't say I've saved 500 without uh, without uh, deducting the, the costs. costs. Mm. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. So you devised the means of managing that cost. The, yeah, the cost of Was business. it by being frugal? So, some, sometimes uh, these costs, however much they save, they are variable and fixed costs. Mm. Other costs become fixed. Okay. Just like in my business. Mm. Every time the trucker leaves Kampala and go to Malaba, it is the same cost of fuel. Mm. Mm. The same amount I pay the driver. Yeah. Uh, the labor, mm. I love to pay the same. Mm. If there are some uh, government uh, dues to pay, they are the same. Mm. However mm. much they are variable, they, mm. they become fixed in nature. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. So mm. I can, if I self deliver the turn and I have a, pro a gross of one M, mm. I can only save the 300 after deducting all that. Yes. Yes. Charles, yeah. I have someone here asking me. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're asking, uh, what are the first considerations to begin when one is beginning a business? Mm. Picking from what Yasin is telling us. The first thing you need to do if you want to get into a business is to look at what solution can you take to the market and you get a customer in the shortest time possible. Mm. And that solution one should be something you are able to quickly learn how it works. Two, you've got sufficient resources to actually get that solution to be done the way it's required by the customer. And I want to just give an example, for example, what Yasin has been doing here. Mm. He said, I know fish very well because my uncle called Friday took me there. Mm. So he was familiar with the nature of how the fish business operates. Mm. Number two, he also said, if I'm going to get involved in beginning to earn the profit directly from the fish, mm. I need to start with the resources within my means. And was able to handle the 100 kilograms yeah. as the first bit of it. And then later, as he made more savings, he was able to graduate and now fill a truck mm. on his own. Mm. So please never ever imagine that there is a certain minimum capital you need to become a business person. Mm. Just ask yourself, what is that minimum size of a business solution I can deliver tomorrow mm. and start from there? Mm. Yasin started from being an employee. Mm. Then he put in some resources, was like just almost like an investor. Mm was using resources of an uncle and then was being given a bit of a shoulder, I mean a shoulder to, 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 to lean on mm. yes. as was building up his muscles. Perfect. From there he, he began to build up his own chain, chain. of success. Perfect. And today he's now into fish, he's into cattle, into real estate and all mm. these kind of things. Okay. Yes. Coming back to you Yasin again. Um, yes. I have about four young people here asking um, whether you'd be willing to share the knowledge you've gotten in this business with other fellow young people, and someone is saying, like the Musei mm. handheld you. Yes. Uh, and uh, while at it, again, someone is asking, did the university education help, or is it helping Very in good your question. business? Yeah. Okay. Very good question. No, to, to for the first question, mm. like uh, sharing someone with uh, the idea I have, mm. or for with. Uh, what I'm handling now. Mm. Mm. It's all about passion. Yeah. Mm. It's okay to f share with you, mm. but you're into media. Yeah. I'm in fish. Fish is my passion. Mm. You may love the success, the vehicles I'm owning, but, the plot, <laughs> but when you don't have the real passion. Mm. Mm. That's the point Charles yes. made, I think. Mm. From mm. Yeah, exactly. the problem, mm. uh, my brothers and sisters, so, uh, the fresh graduates do that are looking for business. They yeah. never follow their passion. Mm. They look at so Charles has succeeded in real estate, and they mm. think of real estate. But mm. are you there? Mm. Can you mm. do? Yeah. Uh, mm. Do you love it? Yeah. Mm. I have many graduates, including my hobbies, mm. that always come to me. How do I start that fish business? Mm. There's, uh, there's fish. Uh, there's money in fish. Mm. Yes, there is money, but how to get it? Mm. I hear you. Mm. Yes. Mm. First mm. of all, I, this is kind of, it, it sounds like being arrogant. There is nothing you can brief me about fish because it's something I know. Mm. It's within you now. So I, it is just within me. It is just part of me. Mm. I, have a I have some friends that save, save my contacts in their, in their phones as fish. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so it is, 
I do <laughs> it because it is, I have the passion. It is your thing. Yeah, I know it. I you can't you. Is, uh, in, introduce anything uh, about fish. Mm. Like when you're telling me that fish is done like this, no. Okay. So if, they, it is, if it's fish is their passion, I can share. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, I, again, because mm. I have many but, but questions. But there's that aspect of yes. the, was it the university? Yeah. 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 yeah the, 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 there's another person the relevance of the about university. the relevance of the uh, Yes, the university, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. To me, well, uh, remember, I was into it before mm. campus. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, I'm a kind of a person who has never seen what we call a universal transcript. Not only mine, but I've never, I don't know how a transcript looks like. He finishes his Though school. I graduated uh, with good grades, I, I've never gone to Makere, back to Makere, like looking forward. To pick your, your Even <laughs> this, this <laughs> thing they say, is it clearing? I hope it's safe, you know, the main building. Yeah. There's the clearing before you can be given I you. I've not even done the clearing. But your name was in the list of those I who graduated. I graduated very yeah. well. I hear yes. you. Mm. Even when you check the list of uh, 2015, I'm there. I hear you. Yes. But I've, I've never, so to me, I have benefited in this education right from senior P1 up to university mm. in two things, knowledge. Mm. The business I'm doing is predominantly for the, nani for the illiterate. They call them the informal sector. Yeah, informal <laughs> sector. Charles, <laughs> do yes. we pick something there? Yes. yes. Mm. We complete the second thing uh, yeah. you pick uh, from the edu fish education. most times, because it is done in the raw areas, mm. the it is in the raw setting. Yes. Mm. It is very hard to find a graduate an elite in that space. In that space, mm. but I'm there, competing with these illiterates. Informal sector. Yes, <laughs> which <laughs> is yeah. an another interesting thing because yes, it presents. Yes, yes, it yes. again poses a question mm. of how you manage to blend in. Yes, yes. because you mm. see, uh, sometimes a bit tricky. Yeah, as an educated person. Yes, I know. You mix uh, with the fishermen and. They have their dynamics, yes. we yes. understand. Their language well. and of their course. character. How do you manage to blend mm. in and do good business? Mm. And that's that's why the education comes in. Mm. Mm -hmm. The way I handle things. Yeah. I don't think down there in Buyende, in Kalangal or Masaka, there is any fisherman that can do a record from where I started. For me, even when you ask me the records of my first sales in 2010, I have with them. Very good. So mm. they, when it comes to banking, if I, I go for a loan and they ask for my records, they even when they send an auditor, could go through my, of which that creates a difference and I it adds a value on my business. Mm. Yes. The management, the system I've always told you about. Yes. Yes. Uh, someone that is not educated uh, that cannot. Uh, cannot do that system. That's right. Mm. So, mm. and then the other benefit with the uh, education mm. is syst the network. Yes. Mm. The network. Yes. Yeah. And that is very, very important. Yeah, the very network. True. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I can contact someone in Nairobi. That how is the market in Nairobi? Mm. How is the market in Rwanda? Mm. How is the, the market in Kampala? The network. I, last time uh, I was called uh, by my OB mm. in, uh, in, in, in Nairobi mm. that my father has got a contract to supply uh, certain big hotels in Nairobi with the fish. Mm. So they need 500 kilograms of fish daily. And I had to grab that business. She's a lady I sat, uh, I, was, I did the, the same course at, uh, with you at Maker. Mm. Mm. So that's, those are, that's network. In fact, that is uh, yeah. mm. the, yeah. the first question you talked about, keeping records and stuff, I think, yeah. ties yeah. in yeah. with what Dawoodi here. Yeah. Dawoodi Bugaga is trying to ask yeah. whether you have a well-articulated and written business plan. Mm. The, re, uh, the business plan, t uh, but it is already there. Mm. Right for, as I told you, I went looking for 5M to invest, uh, to hire a truck. Mm. So sometimes that's also kills people who are looking for business. Yes. They think business is papers. You have to sit, you calculate. Mm. But an idea can be just with you, mm. with in mind. Mm. And mm. if you're smart, you can take it from mind to, to, to practical kind mm. of uh, operations. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. The mm. business, the people who say you, you write a business proposal, we do this, we finance you, do this. You you rotate around. Yeah. You move with your proposal when you've mm. not gotten started. Mm. Mm. And for me, was uh, my proposal in my mind? Mm. I'll start and uh, I'll, uh, you'll ki I'll keep moving. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think that's okay. Mm. Charles, mm. 
Um, of course, I don't want you to tire from people are asking me every mm. day how they can be part of the Enterprise Uganda sessions, mm. speaking from, uh, you know, uh, what you're seeing as land mm. uh, mm. from mm. Enterprise Uganda, mm. uh, and of mm. course, what you pick from your sin submission. Mm. I want Ugandans to know one thing, that everything that we discuss here on s Sunday evenings, it is practical, it's being done by Ugandans, mm. and another Ugandan can do them. In other words, it's possible to replicate the success stories mm. that you are hearing from here. Mm. And at Enterprise Uganda, we have carved out training programs to exactly instill the kind of business mindset that shapes people like Yasin mm. and makes demand now not to fear millions of shillings or cross the borders and do business. So at Enterprise Uganda, we have training programs for beginners, training programs now for a man like Yasin is still a training candidate for all enterprise Uganda services. There is no way you reach where your sin has reached and now you think you are beyond being trained. But the humility to keep learning as you keep on hearing from him is fundamental mm. and is key. So I want again to give just my, my telephone number here. It is 0772-699-808. But I want to say it again. When the restrictions brought upon us by this pandemic are lifted because the thing has passed. Like many of you, the parents who have got sons and daughters at the age of Yasin, like many of you who have been saying, how do I get involved in business? Reach us at your earliest opportunity. Enterprise Uganda is being run by ordinary Ugandans, ordinary people like all of us here, but we create extraordinary stories. Very good, very mm. powerful. Thanks, Charles. And I have to say, Enterprise Uganda, because mm -hmm. there are many that keep sending us messages wanting to know the location of Enterprise Uganda. It's on Rumumba Avenue. Yes. The easiest way to direct you is behind Case Hospital. Correct. Now, um, Yasin, I have again a number of Ugandans here who want your contact, but I want to put uh, this a little more clearly from Immaculate Nalunga here, yes. mm -hmm. uh, who says, because I think he's saying it very powerfully. Mm. How do I get into in contact with Mr. Plan B <laughs> to extricate <laughs> myself from the poverty-stricken environment that is no longer immaculate? Mm. Anyway, you'll talk about, you, you'll give, um, I, I think you'll share how they can get in touch with you. Mm. And, um, you know, but COVID-19 is here and it has affected a number of businesses. Yes. How have you managed, you know, despite, you know, these, uh, the COVID-19 challenges? Mm. You know, like uh, COVID, I think it started in March, mm. isn't mm. it? Mm. We're doing operating normally, yeah. and it found me at the border. Mm. I think the first steps were closing the border. Mm. Mm. This, uh, the mode of sales we, we make at the border, yes. the customers that are able to move from Kenya and come to buy fish, mm. they do. Yeah. And yeah. They are the, the, those are the, the, I think, 80%. Mm. They come. Mm -hmm. buy fish and go back. Mm -hmm. So when they closed the border, mm -hmm. meaning they were locked up the other side, I mm -hmm. and uh, it means we're dealing in almost in a black box. Mm -hmm. It is me to tell her, I have this quality of fish at this price. If she really wants, mm -hmm. she will send the money. They, the they allow the cargo mm -hmm. to, move to cross the border. Mm -hmm. I load my truck, mm -hmm. it crosses the fish, and, uh, and she gets the fish there side. I hear you. To me, COVID-19, I think, has been my best season, mm. I can say, in business. Mm. I, even when you look at the achievements, just between March and now, I can say I've bought a private car worth 30 million. Mm. I have bought two trucks. One is on road, one is still held in, in your eh, mm. uh, pending uh, clearance. Mm. Just in COVID. You've seen the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity. I've taken advantage of each point Powerful. of COVID. Powerful. In fact, powerful. I take jokes with my friends like, oh, Singamze, Asiba Muka. Nayongiramu. Yeah, he looks <laughs> more for more time. <laughs> they always true. cast me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, so, but <laughs> I've been really taken adv advantage of the, of the season, of the situation, <coughs> mm. because it has exposed more, more weaknesses, especially with our computers. Mm. The few computers that co uh, could was able to that had the system to do that. Mm. Mm. I told you of the government, mm. the customer, the staff. Mm. Mm. Now here we come in the government. Mm. Mm. 
Now, if the government tells you a, a border border can't cross the fish to Kenya, mm. Mm. it's only a truck. Mm. Yes. Mm. There are those who doesn't have the truck. Mm. Mm. May I have it? Mm. That advantage I, I use. You exploit it. Yes. Mm. There are those who doesn't uh, know the Kenyan market. Mm. They end at the border. Mm. So they wait for the Kenyan to come. Yes. For me, I can reach the, uh, with my truck, mm. with my cargo. So it's really, uh, for COVID-19, uh, it has really done me well. I hear you. Yes. So as we come to the end of the interface, again, I would like to hear it from you. Yes. Still talking about government. Yes. The number of government programs targeted at the youth yes. mm. uh, is space where you sit. Yes. How best do you think these programs should be, you know, like tailored yes. to meet or to be able to uplift the youths from, you know, uh, poverty or improve their social strata? Just briefly. Uh, like for government programs, I totally disagree with the direct funding. Okay. And if the uh, government had any intention to fund the youth via enterprising, they would only fund or put emphasis on the youth that have already, uh, that are, uh, that are already started in mm. business. Mm. They find you started, they, f they facilitate you. Mm. But for someone that has not started to give, uh, to give money, s it's next to giving that uh, person a, a loan to start. As I told you, you can never get something to start. Mm. Always these youth are given money when they are not ready. They don't have the training. They, they, they don't everything. even... Uh, no where to put it. Mm -hmm. Just it is all a mixture of greed and, uh, and uh, the need for money. I hear you. If I, I, I wish I got it. What is your last uh, word, Yasin? Uh, for the youth, uh, I really encourage the youth to not to take education as the, a destination of everything. Yeah. They, are, they need to explore the, the private sector as well. So looking at education and papers, it's it's it doesn't define your life. Mm. If you go to Macquarie, it doesn't it's not defining your destination. Mm. But still, you can try other opportunities I as hear well. You. Yes. I hear you. Yes. Charles. Mm. Yes. I want to tell Ugandans that um, from the story today of Yasin, we discover a few things. But one, opportunities are everywhere. Buyende would have been the last place for the first graduate in a family that struggled to take a child to school for such a graduate to go back to. He goes back to Buyende and he picks a sector that again is designated as a sector of the illiterates, mm. the fish sector. Opportunities in this country are everywhere, but the ability to expand the resources from something you've gotten started with is the first confirmation that you have started a truly enterprising journey. Mm -hmm. I want to invite Ugandans never to miss these Sunday evenings. They are your very best opportunity to hear it from <laughs> people who have done it, mm -hmm. individuals you can trace up and follow up with, and also be able to confirm that these things can be done, and they will be done by Ugandans. I wish you well, but also invite you to come and associate with Enterprise Uganda. Yes. We're going to invite a lot more partners to come and be part of this platform. Partners from the insurance industry. We're going to get partners from the banking sector. They are going to be part of this platform. And it is going to be a platform where we discuss practical steps on how to create practical business people using what we have as a country. Thank you very much, Charles. Um, uh, Yasin, I have many people asking me for your contact as well. Yeah. Uh, there's something, I don't know, just a mint. Mm. So Very briefly. Mm. Briefly, when it comes to capital, because mm. for the youth, they cry of capital. Mm. Mm. And they look for where to get it. Mm. I take a, a case study of me. I've always worked with Finka Uganda. Mm -hmm. And Finka Uganda, right from the people at the head, uh, I, I applaud Madame Charita Businja. Mm -hmm. and the, the manager, Mudamba Charles. Mm -hmm. They've always come right from the ground. Mm -hmm. These are the people that finance a business mm -hmm. from zero mm -hmm. with the almost uh, zero security. Very interesting. Yeah, so they must look for institutions. Not that, that, that can support that them that can support without much, uh, without much kind mm -hmm. of restrictions and so on. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that's all the time we've had for uh, this uh, discussion, dear viewers.
has been the story of Yasini, um, uh, all the way from uh, uh, Buyende, with Charles Ochichi, our business coach. Um, I know there are many questions that you've sent through. We've, we've not had a lot of time to really go through, but we'll try to actually distill and talk to them uh, next time we're here with uh, Charles. Um, thank you for being a good audience always. I've been your host, Charles Woji. Until next time, have a good evening. Bye-bye.